Hello and welcome to the eighth tutorial that looks at how to use Adobe Flash CS6 in order to create an animation. Now what we're going to be looking at in this video tutorial is we're going to be moving on to a new skill which will actually help us to achieve a mark. So if we look in our animation section here at the different techniques we have to use, we've looked at tweening now in quite a bit of detail. So we should be quite familiar with how to do a shape tween or a classic tween. I will be looking at using motion tweens uh, later on in this tutorial series, but at the moment we're just focusing on getting those marks. So classic tweens and shape tweens will do that anyway. Um, the next one we're going to be looking at then is onion skinning here. We're going to be looking at onion skinning in this video, and I'll show you what onion skinning is all about. It sounds a bit odd, I know, but it's, it, it will make sense when I explain. So let's just minimize that. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, first of all, insert a shape. So I'm going to go to my oval tool here, and I'm going to just drag out a circle. Now, what I've done on my properties, if I um, need to click on the shape first, double click, so I select the background as well. Go to properties, and if I look at my shape here, I've got the light blue fill with the black stroke color. But what I've got here, I can change the style of the stroke. I can have it dashed like that, and I can have it ragged as I've got it there, or I can have it dotted. Um, there's a few different effects there, but you can you can choose those if you want to. But I'm actually going to go for a dashed line at the moment. So. If I select that there and I do a basic basic frame by frame animation, so F6, and I'm going to move it slightly. F6, and I'll move it slightly again. And F6, keep moving it each time, slightly changing it. And again, so F6, move it, F6, move it, F6, move it, F6, move it. So there we are, I've got about, so I've got 11 frames there. Of animation so if I press play we can see that it moves across now if I turn on onion skinning as we can see down here okay there's a little icon and it's called onion skin if we click on that now what it will do you get these brackets here which you can actually stretch out to your whole animation if you want to see every single frame but what it's going to show me now if I move the playhead Okay, what you can see is you can see the current frame I'm on and also any of the frames which are within these brackets. So if I go to my last frame and I stretch the brackets all the way over the whole, all of the frames in my animation, you can see it's like a guide here to help me with my animation to show that my spacings are roughly right. So if I was to insert another keyframe with F6, if I click and drag like that, you can. I'm just trying to get it so it's roughly the same. Now you could spend a long time just pressing the arrow keys to move it, like so, and just counting how many you do each time, but that's going to take a lot of time. But using onion skin in, in this way is really, really effective. Now, with regards to actually achieving the mark for onion skinning, it's not really all that difficult. You don't have to prove that you've used it heavily in your animation. All you actually have to do is turn onion skinning on and take a screenshot explaining that you've used onion skinning. So that's all you have to do to get the mark. So it's really, really easy. And I would just make sure that when you do evidence it, you turn onion skinning on and you drag it out over your whole animation so that they can clearly see that you've used onion skinning. So the reason it's called onion skinning, just to go back to it with the funny name, is that really onions are made up of lots and lots of layers, and that's essentially what this is. So it's going back to old animation types where they used to use tracing paper to trace over an image, and then they keep building up those layers of tracing paper, so very, very thin layers of paper, um, to actually create the small changes of movement on the paper. So you can see here that the first frame, if I click into it, is very, very, very transparent. So it's, so it's further, further down. If I click back onto the last one, you can see that it starts to get less transparent as we get to the final image. So that's a, basically how onion skinning works and how to get the mark for it. So it's not really difficult. It's just a case of showing that you understand where onion skinning is and that you've turned it on. Thank you.